Hey there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a video that I've had to release, I think, in response to a survey that I've recently put out, um, but it's essentially touching on whether I'm going to be doing paid courses or free videos in my future. Um, so I'm going to sort of discuss this with you. So the reason I've decided to release this video outside my release schedule is just that I've put out a survey um, for my business uh, because I'm thinking of making some paid online courses. Uh, for my business, um, not necessarily as a part of Aussie BIM Guru. Um, and I wanted to sort of respond to some feedback I've got from that and give you, I guess, some ideas of my plans um, to get some of your feedback because obviously you're not all on my LinkedIn or my Twitter, so you don't all see me um, when I do this. And also just to share the roadmap for my channel's future. So I guess I'd like to point out that I have the Aussie BIM Guru, but I also have BIM Guru. Um, one is my work, one is my play. So BIM Guru is my business. Um, I don't actually work as a BIM manager anymore. Um, I don't work for a company anymore. So this is literally all of my money that I make now through here. So the channel um, is doing really well. So I don't want to destabilize its momentum by doing this. Um, it's got 150 videos plus. Um, I'm doing two videos a week and I'm trying to commit to that wherever I can. Um, I've got more than 5,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Don't know how that happened. Um, and I'm pulling in about 1,000 every month now. So pretty pretty impressive. Um, and I guess I've got a few series on the channel. So I've got a learning Dynamo series, which is a little bit outdated now. It's not really up to date with Dynamo for Revit 2020, um, but it still has some relevance. And I know people are still getting some use out of it. Um, I've got a Python quick tip series, which will stay relevant um, for a long time, I think. And also a feasibility series in Revit, which is sort of relevant, but probably not anymore. Um, there's obviously some series that are missing from the channel that I haven't done at the moment. Um, one is a Dynamo Basics through to Advanced course. Um, one is Revit Basics to Advanced. Um, one is Navisworks. Another is Advanced Content Creation. Um, I've sort of purposefully not done these on the channel um, because I was planning on essentially maybe making courses that cover these instead um, and I'll sort of cover why um, soon. It's hard to believe that, uh, but a lot of what I'm putting on my, cha my channel isn't that far away from where my learning is currently as well. Um, so like Python, for example, I only started learning Python last year in I think December um, and I'm still learning the Revit API. So what I'm teaching you is unfortunately catching up to what I know as well. There's still a lot more I can teach you, obviously, um, but I might have to double back on some old topics that you know don't relate maybe as much to Dynamo for a while. Um, and some of my courses will probably need to focus on these things too. Um, in terms of how long it takes me to do my videos, that's been one of my motivators behind having to look at an alternative source of income, um, which would be something like online courses. So one video usually takes me about five hours to prepare. Um, in terms of doing something like a Dynamo script, uh, testing it, cleaning it up, uh, recording the video, editing the video, scrubbing the video, uh, uploading it, putting in the description, um, doing the marketing on LinkedIn and Twitter. It's about five hours of work, so it's quite a lot. Um, 150 videos times five hours over the course of just over a year. I mean, you do the maths, it's a fair bit of my time. Um, on top of this, I get a lot of emails. I get about five emails a day um, and I respond to all of them at the moment. Um, I get about 10 LinkedIn messages at least that lead to a conversation. And occasionally I need to do a Skype or a web chat to help someone out. So you can imagine this takes a fair bit of my time up. Um, so I do have to start thinking about alternative ways that my time is best used. Um, as well as this, I'm free at the moment, so that's great in one sense, but in the sense of my professional identity and network, um, you can't always just be seen as a Robin Hood, um, you know, taking from the rich, giving to the poor. It's not always great for credibility, so I do probably need to look at some alternative ways to package my training um, that will give me a bit more credibility, um, because when you do put a price to something, it puts pressure on me to increase the quality of it, obviously, as well. Um, and it also shows that I am comfortable putting a price to it, um, which raises my credibility as well. And I guess something that probably I've never really spoken about is that I'm not really beating the YouTube searching algorithm. Um, my videos aren't that easy to find for someone that's not looking for them. Um, and I think that's because my average watch time isn't that great. 
Most of the time my videos don't get watched for more than an average of about five minutes. Um, and they go for more than half an hour sometimes. So that's not great. So my click off and my click through rating isn't, isn't that great. Um, I think it's because I'm probably doing quite detailed tutorials. Um, whereas people on YouTube are typically looking for the basics. So I think if I did courses, um, I'd get a much better retention um, for people that are coming to the courses and actually they get a lot more out of it too. Um, so I guess the algorithm is one of my motivations too, that YouTube maybe isn't the best hosting platform for some of my more advanced courses. But my promise to you that I've always had is that the channel isn't monetized and it never will be. Um, I could make money out of the channel. I could just press this magic button and every video I make would generate me a few dollars, let's be honest. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I think that YouTube is essentially meant to be a free platform. It's it's free content, it's free speech. Um, to put a price to it seems, seems wrong to me. However, I am giving away my time. That's the other thing when I use YouTube. So my work, I launched it in January. This is my only income stream right now. I have some passive income streams, but they're not really relevant to what I do um, in BIM. So this is it, this is my job. Um, and it's making me some money. Um, but there is demand for this coming from my clients. They do want online training that they can show to their companies and train their staff. Um, and especially lately, the, the coronavirus has shown me that you can't rely on always just coming in in person to run training. Um, this is a way that I can package my knowledge in a, in a way that people can access it, not only during times like this, but on other sides of the world. Um, and that's what YouTube's shown me as well. And the time, um, I guess, unfortunately, I do need to focus more on my business for a while. And this is one thing I do need to focus on. Um, I, I've been putting a lot of time into the channel, uh, especially up until recently with all the Python and the Python for Dynamo work I'm doing. Um, and I guess I need to focus on my revenue. <laughs> I need to I need to focus on making some money as well because I'm, I'm in my early 30s. Um, I, I do need to you know, set myself up for life as well. So this is one step towards that. Um, so how do I do both at once is what I'm thinking now. So my channel's content is always going to be available as long as YouTube doesn't put any paywalls in front of it or change their terms of service, which they can do, but, but um, I'm not planning to change that myself. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep producing videos, but it might go down to like one video a week sometimes or eventually, um, depending on what I do. But I want to make sure that what I do share at least that one time a week is really valuable for the followers of the channel at least. So, you know, not like a how to model basic walls in Revit video because there's a lot of that stuff out there already. So I want to produce higher quality, um, much more refined training um, and do this in a paid course format. That That's my plan. Um, but I'll be doing this via BIM Guru, not Aussie BIM Guru. I do want to keep my educational brand intact um, and focus this as a, a business avenue instead. I actually did the survey and it, it got 85 respondents in less than a day. So I'm just going to present some of those results and sort of comment on what I can see the respondents are telling me. Um, so I guess 50% of the people use, already use online courses. Um, which is great. So it shows me that there is a market for this. Uh, people are using online courses. As well as this, uh, most of them are seeking new skills. That, that's their motivator. So my goal is to share more advanced topics that maybe give you a skill that you don't currently have. Um, the user's most value, at least from what I'm being told, that it has to get to the point. It has to be, it ha doesn't want to drag on. Your time is valuable. My time is valuable, so I get that. So I need to focus on really packaging everything, which I don't always do on my YouTube videos. Sometimes my YouTube videos, I just build a script, I hit record and I just go. And you know, if it takes 20 minutes, it takes 20 minutes. If it takes half an hour, it takes half an hour. Whereas this lets me plan out my courses a bit more. Um, as well as this, obviously everyone wants things to be affordable. So I'm, I'm listening. I can tell that you don't want to pay too much. Um, so I need to really think hard about how much is reasonable to charge for my courses. And I'm going to put a lot of thought into this. Um, I have looked at competition already and seen roughly what people are paying. For example, I know like Linda or LinkedIn Learning is about $300 a year. So I need to think, well, if I'm just doing one course, how much can I fairly charge for that 
when they could just go to Linda and get thousands of them. So there's going to be some some thought process behind how I charge my courses. Um, and as well as that, I think people want exercise material to go with the courses, which a lot of these courses don't give you, um, but I think is really important. You need something to use as an example or follow along with something that gives context to what you're doing. So I'm, I'm listening. Um, it looks like web or video is the way to go. I'm still not sure about downloadable videos because I know that it can very easily just get out on the market once it's downloaded. Um, someone can just go and put it on Udemy and just mute the sound and put their voice over the top. So I do need to think pretty carefully about how I handle that. I think initially it'll just be probably web hosted. Um, and I think what, what I'm hearing mostly is you want advanced. That, that seems to be the resounding message here. Not many people want, say, Revit Fundamentals, for example, which, which surprised me. But then I realized eh, there's already a lot of it out there, actually. So so I'm, I'm hearing you loud and clear. So I think from what I'm seeing, I'm going to stick to what I'm good at to begin with and focus on advanced Revit courses, advanced Dynamo courses, and touching on Python for Dynamo. Um, and I can see that actually there's a bit of demand for Navisworks, but I might actually do an Aussie BIM Guru series for Navisworks instead. So it looks like in terms of what you want to get out of the courses, um, I can see that you want your skills to improve. Um, that's obvious. Um, but at the same time, it, one thing that I wanted to see if people wanted is whether these courses lead them to longer term learning pathways. So I don't want to lock people into my course and they only get their information from my course. I still want to direct them to other resources that they can use once they've been through my course um, because I think it's much better to give pathways rather than lock you in and say, you know, all your learning comes from me, not my goal at all. Um, so that's mainly what I'm what I'm getting from that. Um, as well as this, a lot of you want this, um, but I can see that a decent amount of you aren't sure. So I guess hopefully this video maybe helps convince you that it's not going to be the worst thing for the channel um, and it won't have a negative impact on the channel. Um, so yeah, that, but I noticed a few of you as well are very, very opposed, <laughs> opposed to it as well. Um, some of you are just saying, please don't lock us out of your channel. Um, you know, don't don't lock us out of your content. And I guess guess my response to that is that I'm not going to lock down my channel um, and I'm going to keep trying to produce some content for the channel as well. But at the same time, I've already made a lot of videos for the channel. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, you know, if you've, if you've been through all 150 of my videos and done every, every single script, pretty amazing, but uh, I doubt you have. <laughs> so um, I guess like if you're saying that I'm going to lock you out, Maybe there's already a lot of stuff here for you as well. Um, and at the same time too, someone even said selling training, training is useless and a mistake. Um, my guess is there might be a competitor <laughs> um, because there is a lot of people actually doing really well out of doing this already. Um, so it didn't really deter me, but it gave me food for thought and essentially reminded me I need to make this affordable as well for people in different areas of the world. And in terms of the preferred platform, um, the overwhelming majority of you wanted it to be on LinkedIn Learning. Um, chances are because you're already there, um, which makes sense. Um, but then beyond that, it seemed like there was a pretty mixed bag of what people wanted. Um, my plan currently is probably to use a website called Teachery, um, just to start with, because it's a strings-free platform. They don't take any cut of the course fees that you pay. I, I make the money. Um, they're just hosting the service essentially. I assume that they have some ad revenue or something something like that driving the platform. Um, but at the same time, it looks like it doesn't put any strings on the users as well. So you're not locked into their service. Um, you're not as locked in as say Udemy or Teachable might try to make you. Um, I don't think there's a premium plan or something like that. It's just you pay for the course, you do the course, that's it. Um, but I'll look into this a bit further. And if anyone knows why I shouldn't use this platform, feel free to let me know. Uh, but at, at, at least at first glance, it looked like the best option to begin with. And once this course has built more interest, um, I want to get obviously some testimonials from people that found value in the course, um, because this gives me a business case to actually approach a larger service like LinkedIn Learning <clears throat> to host courses on their platform. But I can't really just start on LinkedIn Learning, unfortunately. I think you do need to be invited to present on LinkedIn Learning from what I've seen, um, but I'll do some more research on this as well. But luckily, most of you appear to be quite flexible. So some of you would only do the course if it's on your platform, a bit under 20%, um, but most of you, whilst you prefer it would be on your platform, don't seem to mind. So this gives me confidence that the, the platform I hosted on probably isn't gonna be a deterrent, um, but I'll think a bit more about it anyway. <clears throat> In terms of my roadmap, 
for the channel. Um, coming up in May, I'm going to be focusing on Python in Dynamo. So I've got about maybe eight videos, I think, on that one. Um, I've recorded most of them already. Um, beyond that, I'm planning to do about a month of Navisworks. So this is a program I haven't used for a while, but when I did, it's one of my favorite programs. So I'd love to teach you how to use it as well. Um, and I'm thinking to do this in a free series on my on my channel, essentially. Um, beyond this, in July, I'm thinking to visit some Revit family creation tutorials. So like how to build a Revit door family in a way that I think is more efficient, um, how to build certain types of families that are a bit more complicated, like parametric arrays. Um, and then beyond there, to be honest, I'm not sure. <laughs> like I'm not quite sure what I'm going to cover past that point. I'm, I'm, I haven't run out of things to teach you, but I'm sort of losing a bit of steam, I'll be honest. <laughs> you know, by then I'll probably have other things I want to cover. Um, but I might be more focused on, say, doing paid online courses at that point for a while and might just do one video a week. Um, I'm not sure yet. I can't see that far ahead in my in my mind at the moment. But um, yeah, hopefully that gives you a bit more confidence. The channel does still have some life in it um, and it will keep going. So I hope this sort of helps clear up some of the concerns that some of you might have had. Um, and I guess your feedback is really welcome. I, I want to know what you think. Um, even if it's negative, just, just make it constructive. Um, put some logic behind why you're against or for this. Um, and I'm happy to take it on board. And um, I look forward to making more content in the channel in future. And um, yeah, we'll keep going. Anyway, hopefully that helps clear some things up. Um, this presentation will be on GitHub like they all are, but um, yeah, don't know if it really helps anyone. <laughs> but um, thanks for watching today, and hopefully um, you'll enjoy my upcoming series on Python in Dynamo um, in about a week. And thanks for participating in the survey if you did as well. And if you're not already following and subscribing, um, probably a bit of a strange video to see for the first video <laughs> on the channel, but, um, but thanks for watching anyway. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.